Oregon is going to land several more five-star recruits in 2025. It's just a matter of how many. You are Locked On Ducks, your daily podcast on the Oregon Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, it is that time once again for Locked On Ducks. I'm your host, Spencer McLaughlin. Thank you so much for making this your first listen or your first view of the day. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day and your number one source to stay up to date with the Ducks, which is why if you have not already, please like, comment, subscribe, rate, and review wherever you listen to or watch this show, which today is brought to you by our friends over at Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase terms apply. That is Brian Smith, our Locked On Recruiting Insider here at the network, presented as always by our friends at LinkedIn Jobs. Brian, it's a big five-star weekend upcoming for Oregon. They have got a a small handful or a heaping handful, depending on how you look at it, of five-star guys on campus this weekend. Names we've talked about before, like DJ Pickett, like Jonah Williams, like Michael Terry, like DeCorian Moore, for instance. I feel like it is inevitable. Oregon is going to land at least two of these guys as their recruitments play out. That's possible. Uh, Oregon is, like I always tell you, the hardest school to project. I hate pr- picking stuff right now. I was telling this to somebody on another podcast earlier today because in- um, which ones would you say are most likely, in your opinion? Not just the bulk. I want names. Uh, Lincoln Cure feels like he'd be near the top of that list. Agreed. I want to say, like my gut tells me, Decorian Moore but that, that, that may be more wishful thinking. And DJ Pickett might be the more likely option of this list. And, and one of the five stars on campus this weekend, by the way, is current five-star commit Dallas Wilson, who Oregon has to continue recruiting. As you know, we'll get to him in a sec. But I mean, that would be, those would be the guys that I get the sense are the two most likely five-star names Oregon can add from this list that they don't already have. Corey and Moore, I give a, a pretty low percentage when I've heard it's going to be really hard to beat Texas. Okay. Really hard to beat Texas. But Oregon's used to that, and they built their program on doing it. So here's their chance. Uh, Dallas Wilson, you made a great point. You can't lose the guy you already got, too. Never forget about that. So Swiss McLaughlin is correct. And Miami and a bunch of other schools, uh, yeah, it's rare that I give him a compliment. It's <laughs> Miami and other schools. That might be the first one. That I, I can't remember another. Miami, Florida State, and several others are are not going to give up on him. Dallas is going to visit FSU. I think it's for the UF game at the end of the year, uh, the goodbye Billy Napier game. But it's one of those. (laughs) That's what I'm I'm calling. If he's still there at that point, but he's. I think Billy Napier will survive the season for what it's worth. I mean, it'd be great for me. It's just more commentary on my Locked On Seminole show. But anyway, the point is still the same. They're recruiting kids out of state all over the place. It's hard. But they know that. They know that plan. And Oregon still gets more kids on campus that you wouldn't think they would at any school in the country. So it's really hard. Pickett, by the way, I think right now is trending Miami, but that thing has went a hundred directions, and I've given up figuring it out. So I like your pick with Cure, but after that, it gets dicey. This weekend is huge for Oregon. Yeah, uh, Lincoln Cure, not sure if he's one of the guys that that is on campus this weekend. He has been – in Oregon sites, though, Steve Wiltfong of On3 right. tweeted out and I think wrote a story as well about how Cure was flying somewhere, I don't remember where, and that Lanning was there in person to meet him at the airport and and greet him and give him that, that personal touch. And sure. certainly it's not the first recruit Dan Lanning has done that with, but he can't do that with every guy. I think there is a reason that, that Lincoln Cure is someone, a five-star tight end out of the state of Kansas, that, that Oregon definitely has their sights on. If you can't get the kids that are more likely, what are you going to do with the ones that aren't? You know, you got to got to hit the hit the home runs when you can, but you know, take the base hits, and that's what he's doing. They've done a great job of cure. He loves the, the program. He's talked good about it since his visit. That was a smart move. They did a really really good job with him. So that's a great example. Yeah, and, and Cure is someone who I think is at a position of, of need for Oregon recruiting wise in 2025. Sure. The tight end position is going to be thinned out. 
after this season. Now, they have a couple of guys in the 2024 class, Roger Saliapaga and A.J. Pugliano. And Saliapaga converted wide receiver, but so too was Terrence Ferguson once upon a time, and that's worked out very well. And he's going to have a career on Sundays at, <laughs> at the position. So th- they have some names, but still, when you lose – your top two guys on the depth chart going into the year after this season, which they will because of eligibility in Terrence Ferguson and Patrick Herbert. To me, there, there are other names at, at the tight end position. I think Deshaun Brame is one that, that Oregon has been tied to before. I, I think that that position group, just, just because of what's going to happen after the season, is one that is going to be a priority for this Oregon staff offensively. If you get cure, then you can get picky too. You can do it a million different ways. At tight end, and you can do that at any position. You need two. So, what do you, what do you think they they need to get a portal guy, or would you go to high school guys, or how would you how would you say is the best? Well, I I, I think that depends. I think that's a great question, and depends on what Solly Apaga and or Pugliano look like going into twenty twenty five. Because, I I mean, you remember Kenyon Sadiq. That guy yeah. is. That guy is a stud. Now, would I describe him as a blocking first tight end? No, I think he's capable of blocking. I know that he can. He did it uh, a season ago, but he's more of your pass catching tight end. And Oregon brought in two true freshman tight ends in 2021, Terrence Ferguson, Maliki Matavau. T. Ferg was more of the pass catcher. Matavau was more of the run blocker. They both played. They both did both. I think you want to have that sort of balance at, at the tight end position is have guys that are maybe a little strong because Sadiq is also so unique. Like he, he could be the starting tight end next year. He could also just be starting offensive player, H back, tight end, offset, receiver. Like he can just go all, all over the place. So that's why Lincoln Cure and Deshaun Brame is one who Oregon is uh, uh, trending for a, as well. LSU, Oklahoma, Ole Miss, and Tennessee are, are also in the picture there. But that's where I come down on the tight end position and why I think Lincoln cures a guy that, that Oregon's going to continue to push for hard. Here's your one problem with your theory. I like it minus this. Most of the high school kids will be done before the season. So if you don't get the second tight end, let's say you get cure, which obviously Oregon wants. You don't get the second tight end before the season, how many of the guys left they really want are still looking at schools? You don't have time to wait to see what happens in the fall. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's – that's why recruiting now with the sped up calendar is bizarre for coaches. You're making guesses. No matter what you see in the weight room and all that, you don't know if he's going to catch the pass, make the block. You're guessing. So the portal guy may end up being what they have to go with if they miss and they see they don't see what they want out of the younger guy. I mean, it's just random and every school's in the same boat. It's it's wild. If you think it's bad now, wait till the kids sign in June next year. That's going to make where there is no. Well, that, that's being proposed. I think that got shot down for this year, but could still be on the table for next year. That you would have an actual right. signing 20, class in that's June. That's what I'm saying. At 25. I, I, I don't. I haven't looked into it, but I want to say they were trying to get it for the last weekend or first week in July. If they do that, you don't get I'd to see down. anything in the fall. All these kids are signed. You're done. So I'd be. I mean. Look, from a content creator standpoint, I'd be perfectly okay with that. I think it would be a much more natural progression for the off season. I think it'd be easier on coaches as well. I, right. I think that could have a lot of upside personally. It's just that you're finishing a class in December, then you finish another one in June. This well, week, no, yeah, I would. Yeah, see, I you got to get rid of December. Just, just take take the December portal window, take the December signing period, take that all away. Get rid get get rid of that. The portal in, December window has never changed. Because of the sigh. No, I no, I, mean, get, I know you understand it, but it's I, yeah, not. yeah. I just, I never get what I want in life, Brian. Though sometimes I, I do. And Deshaun Brain, by the way, just real quick, when was the last time Kansas had two blue chip tight end prospects in the same class? Because that's what you have with Deshaun Brain and Lincoln Cure, a four and five star tight end, both out of the state of Kansas. Have you ever seen that before in your decades covering recruiting? There have never been elite two of anything in Kansas with recruiting like that's it's just not a good athletics it's just not so that's it's a good call it's an anomaly on an anomaly yeah good for them but yeah i don't remember that ever there's one recruit uh who is going to commit next week at a position that oregon certainly can use uh, additions in for the 2025 class is he going to choose oregon Mm, we'll talk about that next 
after we talk about game time. Game time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, something I am a huge fan of. Go Mariners. And game time makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the game time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch, not up, which is you know way better for you. They've got killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee. All that helps game game time helps you take the guesswork out of buying major league baseball tickets. You can save up to 60% off buying last minute for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, etc. Whatever you are looking for. You can get a panoramic view of your seat in the app before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect. They've got all-in prices, so they're not tacking on late fees. Game time's the way to go. Take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E. That's Locked On College, all one word for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last-minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, Brian. So uh, Jordan Davison is a name that will interest, intrigue. English is hard. Anyway, you get what I'm trying to say. Oregon fans for a couple of reasons. Number one, he plays running back. Number two, he is at Modern Day High School, a place that Oregon fans that follow recruiting should know extremely well at this point. Probably the premier recruiter uh, or the premier producer of high-end recruiting talent in the Southern California area, at least certainly it's among them. Number three, he is considering Ohio State, which now has kind of a two-fold recruiting rivalry for some Oregon fans out there because Carlos Lachlan is now Ohio State's running backs coach, and sure. not every Oregon fan took that incredibly well. But Oregon is now in another battle. They're trying to flip Ohio State five-star DB commit uh, Naeem Offord, who was on campus recently. Davison is a guy that, you know, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. I know that he is committing soon, thinking – of committing next week, but Oregon, Ohio State, this feels like another one of those battles that's just going to continue to play out in the Big Ten. I think that it's really interesting that you brought up the Lachlan thing, and here's the other. He's got a great track record. I think he's the best overall running back coach in the country, recruiting and coaching. Ohio State has two running backs already in the fold, and they're bringing this guy in for a visit. If I remember right, or or just took it, it was one or the other. I'm like, if you're going to try to get three elite running backs in one class, Oregon has more to pitch there. Because I, I was talking to somebody about this connected to Ohio State. I'm like, how do you get three guys in one class? You for know, a running I, back. For a receiver, you can do it. Oregon's got three receivers right. right now. They're trying to get that number to four or five. Right. But running back, that's two. Is like Most guys are like, I'm out at three. Somebody's leaving. Oregon's probably going to be able to pitch that. And I'm not saying there aren't other schools involved, but Ohio State's a very attractive offer, whether Oregon fans want to hear it or not. And I I am not an Ohio State fan, I can assure you. But it just is. So this is an interesting deal. I wonder why he's even interested, but they already have two of the four. Oregon's closer to home, got more playing time. If you lose that one, I'm I'm guessing your comment section will not be good when that happens. It might not be the prettiest, but when it – well, sometimes YouTube comments are good, but sometimes they – uh, go, go. <laughs> Sometimes they can they can go off the right. Yeah, Brian. Brian understands. So I, I want to circle back to Dallas Wilson for a, a moment because you mentioned that you know uh, other schools are are in the mix for the Oregon five star wide. He's the highest ranked player on the twenty four seven sports composite that Oregon has right now in in the class of twenty twenty five. Who is going to try to pull him away from Oregon? Miami and Florida State. Those are the main ones. I mean, Florida, LSU. Everybody's still going to try. Better to be Miami or Florida State if it happens. Uh, Miami has the NIL dollars. Uh, Florida State's development, obviously a very good program. And he's good got coach. Great, good coach. Uh, I like Mike Norvell. Um, yeah, it, Florida State's here to stay. Norvell's not going anywhere. That's a very good long-term investment, talking about the stock market, Florida State football. That's going to be nine wins and up pretty much every year now. That's attractive, and they need receivers. So – him taking that visit late in the year, and it's I, I think it's going to be the UF weekend, senior night, the whole nine yards. If I'm an Oregon fan, I don't like that, but you can't avoid it. He's a Yeah, November 29th is when that visit is uh, is scheduled for. Yeah, that's that's UF. So that place will be bananas. So they'll probably be fighting for a playoff spot. So I, I'd imagine that's going to be a rather rabid crowd. So he'll be there for that. Those are the only two that I would think are really serious contenders. And I know people that are around Miami know that Oregon is 
really entrenched this isn't a fly by night recruitment. He truly likes it. And, you know, people that like Miami, like the Miami lifestyle, they, they, they don't get the whole Oregon thing. I'm talking about fans, I'm not talking about obviously some of the coaches that were at the University of Oregon. And they've said it. So this is a great battle. And it's so unique because he's a Tampa kid. Like I know him. He's from like East Tampa kid. That has nothing to do with the West Coast. It's so bizarre that he likes Oregon, but he does. So we'll see. But until that visit with Florida State, I don't think we can count anything. We just got to give him a few more fresh breaths this weekend of Pacific Northwest non-humid air, and he will fall in love immediately. Weather in Central Oregon right now is absolutely gorgeous, Brian. That's not where I am at this uh, particular moment, but it is where I'm based out of the summer. But we continue on to a namesake, no relation to the Oregon now quarterback legend Bo Nix, but Gavin Nix is a linebacker. That's another spot where Oregon has been on a couple of different recruits, whether that's Noah McHale or Nix, there, there have been some others that they, they, they've been tied to as well. Gavin Nix is a Florida guy. He's got a crystal ball in 24-7 sports to Miami. Oregon is one of the schools that's in the running for him. Do you see Oregon as having a chance here? I know flat out that unless something has changed in the last few days, it's Miami or Oregon. Florida State's the outlier. Uh, parents favor him staying closer to home, but Oregon's got a shot. There it is in a nutshell, straight Great from the people that matter. We'll see if the visit matters. Yeah, and I, I think that Oregon has ha- has had a, a heavier emphasis in the state of Florida this year than I remember them having they last have year. Too. They really have. You're right. Yeah, they, they've they've already got several, and they're after more. And I'm I'm here for it. I thought with Rashad Samples on staff, you might see a few more pursuits out of the state of Texas. Now there's still a ways to go. We're going to talk about the re- recruiting class big picture later in, in, in the show, but. You know, the three hotbed states, something I've said for a long time, California, Florida, Texas, if you want to be an elite recruiter the way Oregon is capable of being, you have to have a foothold in two of them. You, you got to be able to hit those states, you know, when you're not in a Georgia or an Alabama where they ha- or a Louisiana where they have, you know, just a bevy of blue chip talent out there. I, I think California, Texas, Florida are the, the, the biggest states, like literally they are among the biggest states, but you also just have so much talent, and football is so very, very big uh, in those states, Texas and Florida, uh, especially there. A couple more names, one of whom who is out west, Josiah Sharma, four-star defensive lineman that, that Oregon has been after. What's the latest that, that you have heard on his recruitment? The Alabama visit is the key. I don't think that's going to end well for them. I think he'll end up a duck, but... That staff has a lot of California ties. They landed a couple of big-time players, one included, from modern day here recently. I'm curious to see if Alabama can get some of these D linemen in front seven guys that, quite honestly, they haven't got as many of them as usual. They're, they're starting to get the linebackers finally, but they haven't gotten as many massive D linemen. So that's an important recruit for them. But that's a long way from California to Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Oregon over the last couple of years, last name for you before we uh, talk big picture in the class. They've recruited defensive backs really well. There's a lot of talent stacked on uh, on the roster. When you think about a guy like Roderick Pleasant, who was one of the kind of gem recruits of the 2023 cycle, was a special teams player primarily a year ago, might crack the two deep this year, but might be more of a 2025 starting caliber guy. They haven't gotten into their secondary recruits yeah, we know who they've been after, guys like Naeem Offord, but another Ohio State commit, or Crystal Ball, uh, rather, not uh, not a commit at this time, is Dorian Brew, who's a five-star, speaking yeah. of the state of Texas. Oregon is among several other schools that, that are a, a finalist for him, reportedly. Do you think the Ducks have a good chance there, or is he going to stay closer to home slash be a Buckeye? Buckeye. That would be my, my strong guess from what I've heard. Now, he's taking visits. But he's lived in Ohio. He likes it. And there's a lot of pull. Um, and they're, I don't know what it is they're doing with their DBs. They might have one of the greatest DB classes of all time if they get in. So they might sign like three out of the top five DBs in the country. So it's – and he wouldn't even be one of the top three, but he's still top ten. It's utterly ridiculous. That's pretty impressive. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, I, I mean, Ohio I, State's got the number one recruiting class in the country in uh, the 2025 cycle right now. And – their, their defensive back commits have definitely been a, a, a substantial reason why. Oregon is a full 25 spots behind them right now at 26th in the country. And when we come back, Brian and I are going to talk about what that means right now and where the class is headed. So 
So 26th in the country is not where Oregon wants to be. It's still the month of June, Brian, and these recruiting classes are going to be filled out largely by, I'd say, the end of July, early August or, or so. You'll probably have, sure. I don't know, help me ballpark, 85% of the, the, the verbal commits and the players that you end up signing on National Signing Day committed by that time. I think it's still a touch early to look at that ranking and say, wow, Oregon is not recruiting as well as they need to. And I've talked recently on the show that, you know, if they want to stay at a national championship level year in, year out, they, they've got to pull top 10 classes consistently. I think there's still a, a hefty amount of time for them to push for their third straight top 10 class. I'm not real worried about it until I see where we're at on about 10th of July. So you're right. A lot of the kids are going to commit in the next 10 to 12 days, and there'll be a few more sprinkled out towards the middle of the next month. Then you'll have your assessment. Where are you? Where are you missing guys? What do you have holes at? And then for Oregon, again, it's the most unique team in the country with recruiting because of their location. Where are they going to be able to go to fill in those gaps, whatever they may be, and finish out this class? Plus, there's that other thing. It's still December for the signing day. You can have kids that come on campus, which Austin is an incredible environment. They can get kids, you know, maybe to flip after they come there. Next year, like we were talking, they won't be able to do that in the middle of the kids are already be signed. I think that's actually a disadvantage to Oregon because it's such a great game day visit place. But this year's the last year they can do it if that, that signing day comes around. Take advantage of it. It only takes one or two five-star kids to completely change your class. So if you get a guy that's a defensive lineman or what, you know, Williams, one of those guys, whatever it is, because you flip somebody during the season, that's fine. I don't think anybody on Oregon staff is going to care who commits. They're going to care about who signs. That's the bottom line. Yeah, and I, I think that conversation gets played out in the college football space a lot. And, you know, teams from other fan bases and Oregon fans, I implore you to not be these sorts of fans. But I, of course, can't control what you all do and say all the time, though I would like to. I'm not Charles Xavier. I can't do that, at least not yet. So one thing I see all the time, yeah, Brian's just shaking his head for those on podcasts. He's had enough of me already. But what one thing that I see all the time is like, well, it's just a verbal commitment. It's just a verbal commit. He, 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 has, he hasn't signed yet. And though, though true, verbal commits stay committed and end up signing with a school. From what I've seen in the last couple of years, covering recruiting on this show and, and talking about over 80% of the time, that's probably the number that, that I'd put out. Like Oregon has had one decommitment in uh, the class of 2025. There might've been, might've been two. I think there might've been uh, a receiver a while ago. I could be... I could be thinking of 2024. I think I'm thinking Jordan Anderson from a year ago who ended up going to, to Oregon State. But uh, they had one decommit so far in the class of 2025. Sandman Thompson, also out of the state of Florida, an offensive lineman. I think that when you get a verbal commitment, you should think, eh, there's better than 80% chance that he flipped. But certainly, you're not going to keep 100% of the guys. That's just the nature of recruiting. Oregon's trying to flip guys. Other schools are trying to flip Oregon players. That's the way that, that this game is played. I expect Oregon's class in the next couple of weeks – to rise in its recruiting ranking. 26 right now nationally on 24-7 sports. I expect commits to start rolling in and for the class ranking to rise. I think the place where they can really build this top 10 recruiting class is in the trenches on defense. You have a couple, you have Matthew Johnson, the defensive lineman, four-star guy out of the state of California. You have Nasir Wyatt, who might have my, probably still has my favorite film of any player in this 2025 class so far for the Ducks. But we've seen Dan and Tosh Lupoy recruit the defensive line as well as any staff in the country the last couple of years. I think you are going to see a lot of beef up front boost this class into the top 10. They only need one or two guys. And it's the most coveted position is the tackle because the numbers are so low nationally. And you're right, Oregon's done a great job of it. And they got kids from all over Oklahoma, Texas, California. It's been really weird, like how Oregon has been able to get kids to. Like, or, when does Oregon recruit Oklahoma? They got a kid from there last year. Was now a they do it right now. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's just, it's very, it's very unusual. But anyway, they do a great job. So now the question is, can they get like the guy? Can they get the player at those spots? Because again, those guys, they, they move the needle with the rankings really quick. If you want a top 10 class, hit corner and D-line in particular. That'll get the scouts going pretty quick because those guys are always ranked a little higher. Yeah, I think the defensive backs are probably the second position where I expect Oregon to make the biggest game. I mean, they don't have a single defensive back right now. By position, their 2025 class is is wide receiver, 
They list Nasir White as a linebacker, which I guess he could be, but I, I think, he, yeah, he's, he's an edge guy. That, and I consider that defensive line. Wide receiver, edge, quarterback, interior offensive line. Well, no, Zaire Addison's going to play tackle. Athlete, yeah. but Deer Hill's a running back. Edge, wide receiver, wide receiver, offensive tackle. And Manning, ironically enough, is going to play guard. 24 7 has got to up their game. They got like three positions on there that are not uh, in, in, entirely clear. But that's what we are here for, uh, of course. So I expect some beef in the trenches, but you know, the, the secondary is that other position. It's why you see names like Dorian Brew pop up or Naeem Offord is a guy they're trying to flip from Ohio State, and that's not going to be easy. DJ Pickett is on campus this weekend. Jonah Williams is on campus this weekend. Those are both five-star guys. And you know, you have a five-star athlete, Michael Terry, also on campus the, this weekend for the Ducks. It, it's a it's a big few days, June 21st to the 23rd for, for Oregon. And I fully expect things to go well. Would you expect after this weekend, Oregon has a commitment by Monday or Tuesday? At least one. You mean publicly? Uh, I'd say 50-50 from that group. Uh, privately is a heck of a lot more likely because especially with the five-star kids, you're just so slow to shut it down. That'd be my guess. The higher ranked recruits you have on campus, the less likely there is immediate public activity. That's just the name of the game. That is Brian Smith. You can find him on Twitter at fb scout underscore florida and if you refer to it as x you may uh, find him on that particular site as well seeing as how they are the same brought to you by linkedin jobs as always brian thanks so much thank you sir appreciate everyone listening i will see you next time have a wonderful rest of your day and go ducks